Hello my beautiful PhD friends, here are my top 10 apps for PhD students that will help you be a better scientist, be a better person, be more productive, ah, everything that a perfect PhD student should be. If you're new to this channel, please remember to subscribe and hit that bell notification because that means a lot to me. Also, I'm going to share with you everything I learned about doing a PhD, about doing a postdoc, about academic careers. Oh, the lot, and I want to share that with you, so please remember to subscribe. Okay, let's get over to that first important app. Okay, so the first uh, app that I think you should consider is Evernote, or another like uh, note-taking app. So these apps are fantastic because if you have a thought come to mind or you need to grab a picture or a reference or an image, you can just grab them, put them into your Evernote um, or Google uh, Keep, I think it's called, app, and that can sync across multiple devices. And so that's something that's really uh, a great thing. You know, PhDs are so scattered, they're full of distractions and things. So if you just need to quickly jot down something, uh, a note taking app will become your best friend. So Evernote or Google uh, Keep are the two that I've used and I recommend for just jotting down those last minute ideas, trying to sort of like just capture the things. You know, your mind isn't, isn't about storing information. You should free up your mind for creativity. And so just getting it out, getting the, the, you know, the thing you should remember out into an app will help. Okay, so when you do a PhD, you need a reference manager. A reference manager, there are a ton of them, uh, Zotero, Mendeley, and EndNote. I've used Mendeley and EndNote, um, and I know some people love Zotero as well, but you know, when I first did my first ever thesis during my master's, um, a reference manager just wasn't a thing. And so I typed in all of the references by hand and it was just horrible. So the great thing about these is there's lots of plugins for Word or whatever um, word processor you're using. And uh, yeah, it's fantastic. You pull in a reference, it grabs all the metadata, it organizes it for you. You can add notes in the, in the program and then it creates a bibliography or a reference list for you at the end. Ah, perfect. So make sure you get to grips with a good reference manager. That will become your friend when it comes to that awesome time of writing your thesis. Go check out my other video as well about writing your thesis, how to do it quicker or your literature review as well. Um, and yes, you'll be on to a winner. Now, as a PhD student, you are gonna have loads of tasks to do. You're gonna have tasks for an upcoming conference, you're gonna have tasks for writing papers, applying for grants, um, preparing for that conference presentation, uh, preparing a poster as well. So all of these things require you to be over everything. So EndNote, like I talked about, is great for grabbing those ideas, storing them so you can organize them later. Now this is that next step. Like um, this is an app that's gonna help you manage your time. It's a task management app. I love Asana. Asana is just a great thing. Each little task has its own card and you can move it through a process. So for example, um, if it's a paper, you can say I'm writing this paper currently, I'm in data collection mode for that paper and it can sit in that column. And then you move it across, blah, 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 onwards until it's in like review, peer review, accepted, and then it's done. Um, same thing with conference presentations. You know, when you say, okay, I'm gonna give a conference, where am I? I'm collecting data, I'm, talk I'm preparing the talk, I'm refining the talk, I'm giving a practice, this talk and I'm then taking it to the conference. Like just having this linear sort of process is really great and Asana will help you do that. You can also use Trello as well. Um, now uh, post my PhD, post my postdoc into the real world. I love using Asana just to keep track of all those little things that I need to be doing. Um, and once again, this is about emptying your mind and having it stored somewhere else so you're not completely bogged down and you can use your mind for creativity and thinking about things which is what a good PhD student should be doing. I am rubbish at spelling, and so I always use Grammarly. 
Grammarly is a great way of just checking your grammar, checking your spelling. And look, to be honest with you, I, I don't think I'm necessarily bad at spelling, but my mind goes super fast and my fingers just type and I'm trying to type at the same speed that my mind is giving my hands the thoughts. And it just gets a lot really messy and gets really kind of uh, full of grammar mistakes, full of typos. And you know, word processors have, have their own inbuilt spell checks and they're great, but Grammarly is just that little bit sort of, uh, I don't know, a refiner, I guess, for the sort of language that you're using. Um, and so I've used Grammarly, It's there's a free option. And uh, especially when I'm writing blogs and stuff now online, um, I just always use it, I trust it, and uh, it's getting better and better. So Grammarly, um, I think should be a useful tool for nearly everyone if they're a writer. Download it, you won't regret it. I do not like open plan workspaces. There, whew, I said it. Um, and But a lot of the time PhD students get crammed together either in the same office or an open plan if you're lucky enough to be in a new building. And so this app will help you kind of retain a little bit of uh, peace and calm in a noisy environment. And that is my noise. So my noise it has got a white noise generator that I absolutely love. I use it even in this office if I just want to block out. If I have, I kind of train myself that when I've got this white noise, that kind of thing going on, um, that I just work. It helps improve deep work. It helps improve my, con my my concentration. And so yes, my noise. I think it's .net is the website, and they also have a, a, an app as well for um, Android and iPhone. And so you can just download it. It's free. I've, I've um, uh, uh, used it mainly for the white noise purposes, but there are a ton of other things like babbling brooks and white noise, brown noise, blue noise, pink noise, the lot. So uh, yeah, you can find a noise that just helps cut through all of the distractions around you. It helps keep you focused and I really recommend it. So go check out my noise if you have problems with a noisy work environment and you just wanna settle in and do some deep work. This one is something I haven't seen anyone else talk about before and that is Smart Tribe. So when you're doing a PhD, look, let's be honest, you are not gonna end up with an academic career. That is just not what happens these days. So Smart Tribe connects uh, PhD students and academics with industry. It's a great collaboration tool. It accelerates the collaboration aspects. I don't know why you wouldn't sign up and just start to get your free introductions. You know, there's a there's a freemium plan for one introduction a month where you can just get connected. It's like networking um, without all of the boring sort of like talk, small talk or awkward standing in a corner on your own. Uh, so smarttribe.io um, I think is the, the website. Go check it out because if you are looking at those later kind of steps like entering a new career, trying to expand your networks, trying to look at industry as an option for you, even just, you know, co uh, collaboration with industry if you want to stay in academia. I think it's very important. So it's a great app. It's only on the web at the moment. So go check it out, Smart Tribe. Um, and I think it's a fantastic tool for those that want to be connected with industry and increase and accelerate the collaboration. When you're doing a PhD, your mental health is important. Okay, now these two things are a little bit lame when you first start, or it feels a little bit lame, they are not lame, but it feels like uh, so, so cringy when you're sat there in silence, you're like, I've got so much to do, but they are meditation apps. So Headspace is probably the most famous one and someone that I really like. I use it every single day for at least 10 minutes. A, a, a guided or semi-guided meditation. They have introduction uh, courses and beginners courses. Like they have a, I think a 30 day course, beginners one, two, and three. I've just been through that again because it's a great refresher and it just helps quiet your mind when all you're thinking during a PhD is I can't get through this, this is really hard, I'm completely confused, nothing's working, and you just need to work on controlling your thoughts and meditation and mindfulness meditation is one of those. If you don't wanna pay for Headspace, there is a, a app called Insight Timer that I used for a very long time and it's got lots of free meditations on there and I recommend 
you give it a go. During my PhD, I did all of my imaging in Word. I became like a Word illustrator. I was brilliant at it. I was so proud of myself. Oh, I think I've got an example here, look. That was done in Word. How good is that? It's not what Word is, is useful, used for, and it's not, it's not why it exists. So I recommend you get GIMP, which is a Photoshop open source alternative, and you look at Inkscape. Inkscape is a vector um, illustrator, which means that you can zoom in and out and it doesn't go all pixelated. Um, you can export out great images. There is quite a learning curve, but there are loads of free options online for learning them. And I feel like if I had learned that when it came to writing my thesis or, or creating um, images for front covers even um, of journals or even just images for my papers and my, my poster presentations and oh, the lot of it, like every time you need a graphic, you know, a picture says a thousand words and I completely agree with that in the scientific context as well. And so if you just need to create like a little image, a little something, then Inkscape and GIMP will be your best friends. They're com completely free. They're super powerful. I've used them for years now and I absolutely love them. All the logos, all of everything that I create is with those two platforms. Um, and so, yes, I absolutely love it. And getting used as a PhD student to communicating visually is super important as well. Um, it will it will allow you to kind of separate yourself from the pack. Good communication is fantastic. And being a great, you know, not great uh, artist, but being sufficiently skilled in Inkscape or GIMP will make you stand out. I guarantee it. The last app, number 10, is a timer app, okay? I use an interval timer um, just to focus my mind, just to make sure that when I'm working on something, I know how long I've been working on it, and also that I'm not distracted during that time. So I do about uh, an hour and a half of, of deep work where I just go in and I just focus. This is gonna be part of it when I edit this video, when I do blog writing, when I do other stuff, I'm like, okay, no one's gonna distract me for an hour and a half. I stick on my noise, the white noise generator, and I just sit there and I work without any distraction. Um, I don't look at phone, I put my phone on flight mode. And so having a timer just allows you to be honest with yourself. I was amazed before I started using a timer, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm working for like 20 minutes. And I wasn't, it was like 10 minutes at a time. But now I've got to train myself to do an hour and a half of deep work, just sat there and, um, yeah, it, it just keeps you honest. Kind of like how a metronome keeps a, a musician honest. Uh, a timer app will keep you honest. Even if you just wanna do half an hour to an hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is, put that number in and just put start and it will tick down. It will just make sure that you do get 45 minutes or an hour, an hour and a half worth of good work right in without distraction because you are not good at estimating it, I guarantee it. Okay, let me know in the comments below what you would add to that app list and if I've missed anything important. Okay, enjoy the rest of the week, be cool, stay safe, look after yourself and your mental health during your PhD, and I shall see you in the next video.